Hi, we're live here at the DeVos Center here in Grand Rapids, the west coast of Michigan for PowerPlex 2014. This is the 12th annual PowerPlex, and we're here with some of the industry's greats, Dennis Hallett <laughs> and Vinnie Merchandani. Really to go over the keynote and the announcements today from Jason Blessing, as well as the rest of the team and some of the product announcements. First reactions, Vinny? I'm just glad to see you're so energized, Ray. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the first reaction. We're digitizing the shop floor. <laughs> I've got to be excited. This is Digital Transformation Network. No, it's, you know, it, this is just a, it's a great day in Grand Rapids, right? I mean, it's a beautiful day, nice center here. Uh, Grand Rapids needs more exposure. It really is a nice city. I agree. DeVos and Anvendel, those guys, the founders of Amway, have given a lot back to the city. I think we've seen that here in the DeVos Center here. Just down the street is uh, Helen DeVos's uh, you know, contribution to the hospitals and the uh, healthcare system here. And we're actually looking across the river here at the Gerald Ford Museum. So the Presidential Center is actually here. Dennis, any initial thoughts about Grand Rapids, first time here? Well, apparently it's the beer capital of the world, so I mean, I'm certainly in favor of that <laughs> as somebody who used to own a brewery. So yeah, I mean, that was a bit of a surprise to me. So, And I'm actually hanging around for an extra couple of days, so. You either well, Traverse City run or hang out here in Holland or Grand Rapids? Um, just down the street, Muskegon, somewhere like that. Uh, Muskegon, yes. Yeah, what is that how you pronounce yeah, it? Muskegon, whatever. I believe. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we it's, are, it's a lovely place. I believe here, according to the natives. Oh, yeah, yeah, Gander, okay. it's uh, over there. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a great place. All right, well, excellent. Well, keynotes, what do you think? Um, opening session uh, from Jason Blessing. I actually thought I, the, it was a great session, right? Nice to hear that they've raised another round. Good to see who the partners are on the round as well. That, oh, you're I, talking about the T-Row price, $50 yeah, million yeah, yeah, dollar yeah, yeah, round yeah, yeah. That's, with that, the Excel that's, partners? Yeah, that, that, that kind of thing's important. Uh, good to see that they're taking the product forward, taking it more ups, up, the, up the food chain with the um, financials announcement, the supply chain announcements, and so on. The only thing that I thought was missing was I really want to see live customers on stage, and that was kind of missing. But other than that, it was pretty good. Well, you know, just a slightly different customer standpoint from uh, than Dennis. I like the way they kicked off the session, the whole session with a video of different shop floors. Oh, yeah. Was that a tearjerker for you? Well, the, the important thing was Jason came up and said, "Those are all from Plex customers. No stock footage, yeah. right? How many other ERP vendors?" could even put together three customers that they would show off, right? The great thing is manufacturing is back, and Plex is bringing together, as you said, a very solid core group of manufacturing, committed, passionate folks. And that, that's good to see. And you know, the fact that it's right here in Michigan kind of adds to that flavor. So I, I, I'm impressed, I'm energized by the, yeah. the manufacturing vibe here. The shop floor vibe here. It was a tearjerker for me. It's kind of <laughs> like when you see the Constellation Omega, you know, commercial with the guys circling around. You see the manufacturing. I mean, this is the, I mean, I have to say it, but this is like the American manufacturing renaissance. But actually, it's the manufacturing renaissance that's happening around the world. Around the world. Where people it, are it, bringing back manufacturing to much more local make-to-order production than before. It, it really is a global trend. I mean, you know, much, much as we like to see it in terms of an American standpoint. And, you know, a lot of good positive trends, right? Our energy position is helping manufacturing come back. States are becoming more friendly to manufacturing. Labor is becoming more friendly. So there are a lot of positive trends, but it is a global trend, and a lot of different parts of the world are learning to you know, build things where 20 years ago it would look like everyone was headed towards services. So that's good to see. What's also impressive is, and we saw a little bit of that with the Google Glass and the sensors and so on is, mm how much more automation there is on the shop floor, right? I mean, they didn't talk much about, but you can see it in next generation manufacturing, the agile robotics that are showing up on the shop floor, the augmented reality you know, that people through glass and other, uh, other uh, wearable technology that is showing up and use it and worker training and worker safety and a whole bunch of other applications, mass con customization, is becoming real after 20, 25 years of promise. So manufacturing really is going through a renaissance, not just in location, but also in technologies, attitudes, and so on. And I think it's important that people remember that um, manufacturing has been automating a lot of stuff. It's been using this so-called Internet of Things concept for a lot of years, oh, yeah. a lot of years. And um, you know, the rest of the world think it's something new. It's like, duh, excuse yeah. me, how we're retrofitting all manner of equipment to take advantage of the sensor sure. technologies that you like to, to, to deliver some incredible 
advances in efficiency and effectiveness. It is. One of the uh, partners there was actually showing electrical imps and sensors that was going yeah. on, I think one of the silver partners. Uh, but back to your point earlier, even in, uh, you know, out in Brum and Coventry, Rolls-Royce is bringing back manufacturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to some of those things that you're talking about. But I do want to go back to your point earlier about moving up scale. Yeah. Um, you saw the Plex, the beginnings of the Plex Enterprise Edition. Yeah. Uh, what was important there that caught your eye that said this is going up market? Well, I mean, the, the, they're going straight away for this um, complex accounting side of things, which sadly is dear to my heart. As Gets you excited, doesn't it? Well, occasionally. <laughs> as a, as Cheers, a you're a for Dennis. Yeah, <laughs> as, as a former number cruncher, it's kind of important. I mean, I understand what those, uh, those complexities involve because uh, apart from anything else in the past life, I did own an engineering business, so I understand some of what's going on there. And it's important, important from a competitive standpoint because the competitors like to pigeonhole this company as being, oh, this little company based out in the middle of nowhere, yada, 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 whereas this puts a completely different complexion on things. You know, really interestingly, that was the one point of the keynote where I tuned out. And I'll tell you why. Wow. Because the previous generation ERP should have gone to the shop floor but it was used more in the white collar accounting and order management and so on. The risk we run with next generation ERP like Plexus, we make the same mistake again. So stay CFO, focused on the MRP, MES portion? Well, I mean, they need, they need good accounting. There's no question, but don't make that as high a priority as the previous generation. I, I, I hear what you're saying there, Vinny, but the facts of life are that it's CFOs that buy a lot of this stuff in the first place, isn't it? And you've got to bring those guys on board. Yes, then you can get to the other stuff. What did you learn from the last generation? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> Times, <laughs> Times you've got to say not a lot. So, so to me, much as I, as an ex-accountant, yeah, yeah. should be excited about it, I'm actually a little bit concerned that we would follow the same trajectory we did in the last generation. Yeah, except that they've included um, extended supply chain, right? And, and this. Oh, no, no. All, all that functionality yep. I'm happy with. It's, yep. the, it's the focus on improving financials that, you know, to me was... They need to do it, but I wasn't that excited about it. You know, well, you've got you to start somewhere and you've got to deal with the transaction is the sure. way that I would look well, at it. What's been interesting, though, we actually see a new breed of CFOs emerging, and I think you're seeing sure. that as well, that are much more innovation-minded. Uh, over the last 10 years, I think when we've done surveys about where CIOs are reporting to, we actually see almost half report to CFO. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, but when the CFOs actually have a chance to do something innovative, once they feel they've got control of the cost structure and cost situation, they realize that they have to do something. So there may be hope there, uh, but I do understand your concern. It's been brutal well, the uh, thing, for a lot of these places. The thing for the CFO is, is that, that so much has changed and so much power has moved away into other centers that they have to become relevant again, right? And that and, means that they and, have to be central to the decision-making process in a purposeful way. I think the, in the previous generation, many of the consultants from the accounting firms swung the implementation so the financial modules got yeah. implemented first, yes. and then they ran out of money for the shop floor or the supply chain areas and so on. You know, so shame on us as an industry if you don't learn from that experience. That's a great point about the cloud, actually. And, and we looked at these cloud deployments. What was that one with the Waffle Company, U.S. Waffle? We need this up in five weeks. Was that what they were talking about? That was impressive, right? Um, and the uh, bottling company as well that was like looking at getting that up in, you know, Leslie in a quarter. But these are the kind of benchmarks that people are going to have to get used to. Yes. And that, that that's that's a completely different tempo to to anything that we've. Uh, but but seen back to your past. point though, because we can implement this quickly doesn't mean you should. Right? There's still an aspect of change management and transformation that has to happen. Do we redesign a process differently? Do we look at creating new business models like you often talk about in, uh, in your blog, New Florence and uh, Deal Architect? Right? You're seeing these kind of things and innovations come to bear, um, but people should actually spend some time and actually deliver on that transformation. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the one thing that, one of the more impressive things over the course of the keynote was, I think two or three times they said, customer offered to be a reference even before they went live. One of them did it on go live date. And so one, one thought I had was, God, that was a brave salesperson <laughs> to even <laughs> take a customer when, when another customer is going live. But I think it's a, it's a huge endorsement of the comfort they feel with the cloud model and Plex's capabilities and so on that they say, yeah, sure, go live is just another you know, milestone in a long journey, no problem. We'll, we'll be there, there won't be an issue, right? Yeah. And that, that was a huge, uh, to me, an important uh, little, uh, you know, compliment to Flex from several customers. And I think also that it's, uh, 
one thing that they achieved this morning, which probably would be missed on a lot of people, was that they were able to demonstrate that they're not just in one market. They're not just in the automotive tin bashing market. They're in a lot of different markets. And people sometimes don't necessarily get to understand that. And it's, it's important. Um, well, about three years ago, right, we didn't think they would be in process or food, no. right? And process was a market where it was dominated by Ross and QAD and SAP and maybe a little JD Edwards. Uh, now it's actually up for grabs, yep. right? Uh, but, you know, I mean, I think they need to be careful not to go after too many markets, right? And then as they shared with us a couple of months ago, mm. that certain discrete markets like, especially the, the second tier suppliers to auto or aerospace and so on, mm. were clearly one where they had a decent amount of momentum. They're doing some process, food, and we saw some examples, food, waffles, and, and uh, Beer. alcohol Beer. and so on, Beer. right? Which, which, again, a nice little niche to go after. But you've got to be careful and not just say, we do all manufacturing, right? Because then, then that's kind of boiling the ocean. Well, yeah, that's for sure true. But I, I do like the fact that they've moved into some of these areas that are, are non-automotive um, or non-aerospace or what have you. Because you know, they were at risk a few years ago of, of being too confined in some markets, I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of stuff happen on quality. I must have bumped into at least 15, 20 customers last night at the reception. We were talking about using Plex just for quality and using SAP somewhere else, but using quality as the entry point. Uh, did you see other entry points as you guys were working the floor? No, not particularly, not yet. Uh, that's going to come later. Okay, gotcha. 1,100 people in the manufacturing cloud. Uh, that's the part I guess we were customers, talking about. Yeah. 1,100 customers. Yeah. And that geographic map wasn't all centered in the heartland. Right? That was Europe, APAC. Um, I mean, what are you seeing in terms of some of those trends? Well, it, it's clear that, that manufacturing, if you will, has been very much the last to move in some senses, but it will leapfrog, okay? I mean, we've seen slow change in, in other areas, but manufacturing has, has, has tended to be a little bit slow. Recession had an awful lot to do with that uh, in know, some that, senses. That I blame on last generation implementations. The shop floor was ignored. Yeah by that generation. That doesn't mean the manufacturing world has not been innovating. I mean, if you look at some of the stuff that hasn't come out of the ERP world, the robotics and the, the uh, augmented reality training and so on, manufacturing has been very, very, has always been focused on efficiency and scale and so on, okay? Just because ER, ERP, the previous generation ignored it, uh, or, or just because it's taking that into account now, I don't think they should take much credit. The so you're saying the broader, the broader manufacturing tech space has innovated while the software has lagged. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Especially the ERP space has lagged in a focus on the shop floor. I think it's been asleep for the last 20 years. I mean, the manufacturing. Company? Yeah, the manufacturing software side. I agree oh, with yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they've been ignored since MRP and the first generation of ERP. Yeah, so. I mean, if you think about it, the big players that we that we often reference. Um, Whereas they, they may well have started in some senses in MRP, their focus in, in the last, what, 10, 15 years has been what? Financials, HR, ah, CRM, back that's to it, boom, boom. I think back to Vinny's point, yep. that concern. Yep. So, yep. Very interesting. Well, hey, this is a great uh, summary of what's happened on the opening day. Any last thoughts that you have? I think there's a lot to look forward to. You know, it's not often, you know, somebody said to me, hello, Hal, it looks like you're in danger of getting excited. It's like, well, yeah. <laughs> You know, really, you know what I like. I like reference customers, and I like innovation. And I saw both of that, uh, you know, on stage today. You know, like Dennis said, it'd be nice to have some live customers, but there's plenty of them around here that we're going to be meeting over the next couple of days. So not having them in the keynote didn't bother me as much. The fact that Jason had so many of them sprinkled throughout his talk. Sure. Clearly from, clearly start to, from start yeah. to end, he talked to customers, yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful. And, and we're going to have a lot of them here on the show today uh, and probably tomorrow as well. And I think you guys are interviewing a few of those as well. Uh, but hey, uh, wrap up here on the opening day keynote at PowerPlex here in Grand Rapids with Dennis Hallett, Vinny Merchandani, and I'm Ray Wong with Constellation Research. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Thank you.